is the way in which food functions both as a kind of leveling or equaling device and also as something that is extraordinary or superior. Uh, we saw especially in the first uh, piece here, but also in, in each of them actually, the way in which social hierarchy, which we understand in Japan can be very strong, very vertically organized, the way in which food can rupture social power and social hierarchy, and that's one of the liberating forces of food here. Um, but also, kind of alongside that, the way in which food really insists on a new hierarchy, this way in which food brings us to an extraordinarily powerful experience. Heaven was cited in the last film, the middle one talks about the, the, just the visuals, this kind of transcend, transcendental force, even the term transcendence is used, this kind of incredible power that food has. Um, so both at the same time as food levels social relations, it also brings us uh, a new force. Now one of the things I think is really interesting um, in these films is the way in which they take something that's really short-lived, the experience of a flavor in your mouth, and they turn it into a story, they narrativize it. Um, this is something we could say happens with violence, it also happens you know, in the yakuza genre, or it happens in, uh, forgive me for saying, maybe on a Sunday morning, but it happens in pornography with sex. Things that are very short-lived and very intense are turned through the force of story. We can enjoy them longer. And I, th I think that also is, is happening here in these food films, where you have the very short-lived experience sometimes of a, of a flavor on your tongue that's now sustained across 30 minutes, across, uh, we saw it today for 90 minutes of a really interesting film. So that's just some, some things to kind of keep in mind as we approach these, uh, these anime and the genre. That's a really good point, especially about how the experience is elongated, and also how it's interspersed with instructions uh, these animators and these moderators assume that the, the audience is knowledgeable, that uh, you can talk about these things in detail and people will still appreciate it and follow it and be interested in it. So this is, I think, something that may be, is maybe lost in entertainment, but it's the instruction part of it as well is, is something that's fun. Um, I know you're a subtitle and translator too, so these kinds of films, I think, are really difficult to translate because there's so many different types of ways of describing food, right? In the English language we maybe have, I think, I'm not sure the exact number, but maybe it's 50 or 60 different words for, or different onomatopoeia for food sounds or food tastes. But in the Japanese language, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different mm -hmm. words to describe different textures and flavors. So have you had any experience with these types of films or these types of translation experiences where it was difficult and maybe you could speak about that? Well, in, in I don't per personally do uh, food food film translation, so I'll have to, to admit my uh, limited experience there. But I think if we can think in general about the kind of onomatopoeia, the, those words that we have in English that, that sound like the words that, that come from sounds or come from, in Japan, the onomatopoeia can even come from emotions. Um, what, for example, does heartbreak sound like or what does a tear sound like? Um, the ways in which these the, the realm of of a physical emotion is transformed into sound. And the way in which that, uh, we could say, a very feeling approach, an emotional approach to language, how we can bring that in English, I think, is always a challenge. Um, one of the things also, I think, that is, cha is, is difficult in these particular films, and I thought the translations, forgive me, I'm, I'm, I met JV, JVTA, but I think they were all really brilliant translations by, by some of the students I've taught, um, uh, is the way in which they capture the intensity of the feeling just at the edge of satire, right? And that's, I think, what's always so brilliant about, about really all of these films, is they are all at the very edge of, of being ridiculous, but they stop just short of it. There's a real belief <laughs> in the power um, of the food, and, and we can also believe, or at least we hope for, food that will taste that good. And I think um, that's the difficulty here with the translation as well, to get something that is at the edge of um, the unbelievable. Yeah, and I think, well, it seemed from the audience laughter that it translated, of course, a lot of those ridiculous images of transformation and people exploding probably <laughs> translate no matter what kind of language is being represented on the screen, but uh, in regards to just how those different sounds and those different words can translate through that image and through that experience, I think it's really important. Yeah, we'd like, um, just think of uh, here in LA, we have Umami Burger, right? Because we don't have the vocabulary really in, in 
English to describe something like umami. We, we can do it, but it takes more words. And so I think what's difficult with these films is to have an efficient uh, translation. Of course, subtitles are all about how to give something in as short a, a very, very quick read. You don't have to be reading a lot of subtitles. So the, the challenge is that much more uh, increased, I think, with subtitles. Yes, and like you bring up the umami burger, which uh, might not have translated maybe 10 years ago, but now people seem to have an understanding of what umami is. So I think they translated umami into a different language, or into an English word, and select this very specific word to get that across. But depending on the region, and depending on which maybe experienced audience you're playing this to, you might not need umami, or they might not need something like dashi, for example, where people on Top Chef just routinely throw it out. A lot of these words are becoming kind of international in many sense because of 